perplexed and befuddled asks, can you do a show about making a microscope? Who names their kids perplexed and befuddled? Hey Squints! To see the invisible world, your eyes need a little help. And even though squinting is wonderful and heavily endorsed on this channel, it doesn't quite do the job. But microscopes are just the help we need. They use curved glass to magnify light, which magnifies the world around us. To first understand microscopes, we need to know how light travels. Thousands of years ago, people began noticing some interesting properties of light. The first, now called the camera obscura, happens when light goes through a small opening. You can do this by blacking out a window and then making a tiny pinhole for light to come through. Magically, you will see the light outside the room project onto the opposite wall, only upside down. This happens because when light bounces off objects, like the sun's light bouncing off the person outside, the light bounces off in all directions in straight lines. Remember, things look certain colors because those are the colors of photons that they bounce. If a person's head is above the hole in your blacked out window, the only way light bouncing off the head can enter the room is to angle downward and makes the head look flipped. Same thing with photons that bounce up through the hole. And more importantly, this pinhole makes the person outside look magnified on the wall so that they seem bigger just like a microscope. Curved glass called lenses can mimic this effect on light. When you shine light at a lens, like in a magnifying glass, the light gets angled into a pinhole, like in a camera obscura, called the focal point. From there, the image is flipped and gets larger. And this is how microscopes work. In most light microscopes, light shines up through your sample. Because of this, your sample needs to be really thin. Otherwise, light won't go through it. Hmm. Looks like I'm not thin enough. I think I need to go on and eye it. Wow. When light goes through the sample, some colors of photons get absorbed by the object. The rest bounce straight through towards the first microscope lens. Once inside the tube, the lens angles the light to its focal point and then magnifies the flipped image. The last lens at the top, called the eyepiece, takes that flipped magnified image and magnifies it again. Hot and ready for that eye to see. Simple microscopes like a fold scope skip that eyepiece and tube altogether and just use one lens. A glass ball works great for this. With light coming up through your object and hitting that glass ball, the image gets flipped and magnified and you get a microscope. You can build your own simple microscope using a drop of water Instructions are in the link below, but by hole punching a clear plastic container and letting water fill in the hole, you create a lens that magnifies light. Then all you need is light that can shine up through your sample and voila! A homemade microscope that cost zero dollars! So stop naming kids perplexed or befuddled please, keep asking questions, and keep on squinting. Did you know we have a website full of science activities you can do? PlanetSquint.com On it you can find how to make your own microscope as well as other science goodness. So check it out!